<coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. <coughs> I'm going to do this. Big deep breath. <sighs> Let it all out. Okay, here we go. Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz, and this is Ascension Presents. So, it is Ash Wednesday. Well, maybe it's Ash Wednesday when you're watching this. If it is Ash Wednesday when you're watching this, tomorrow is the Thursday after Ash Wednesday. That will be March 3rd, 2022 at 2.30 p.m. Central Time. Back in this channel, Ascension Presents, there's a guy named Father Mark Toops. Father Mark Toops is the author of the Lenten, Ascension Lenten Companion. He is going to be uh, journeying, basically kind of like with people throughout the course of Lent with this companion and online. So, if you're interested at all, go to, back to this, go, go to, no, stay, or return to this channel tomorrow at 2.30 Central Time um, on March 3rd. And if you missed it, maybe they'll have it recorded. I mean, it's going to be recorded. Maybe they'll rebroadcast it. Maybe you can, like, return to it. Anyways, this Lenten Companion, it's money. So, check it out. It is Lent. Um, I don't know if you noticed this. You might be part of the virtual front pew. The, the, we have an online mass every Sunday. Last Sunday, uh, something went completely wrong with the camera. The audio worked just fine, but the camera did not work just fine. And so there was no image, there's no picture. So we just kind of posted the homily. It was one of those situations where I felt badly for the virtual front pew, those folks who are unable to get to mass in person, because we've been praying with them and for them um, throughout this whole pandemic. In fact, back in 2020, I don't know if you heard about this thing, in March of 2020, uh, when everything shut down, everything locked down, one of our thoughts, we didn't even get to say goodbye to our students on campus. I work on a campus and they were on their spring break. We were all on spring break and it was like, oh, I'll see you next week. And all of a sudden it was like, oh, I'll see you. I don't know when I'll see you. And so one of our thoughts was we wanted to be able to like, even knowing that people couldn't get to mass, we're like, well, let's have a mass online and reach out to our students. And so that's, I contacted Ascension and said, hey, can we do this? And they're like, yeah, great. We'll, we'll host it on the platform. Really kind of, kind of a cool thing. We got a camera. It was, <laughs> it was what it was. And then it seems like every, I don't know, four or six months, there was a need to update something. Like, okay, the camera's fine, but it's not really that great. Or the audio's okay, but it's not really working that great. Um, and so every single time, we would uh, <laughs> try to fix things because they seemed to not be working. Or not working like they should, or not working like they could be working. And it would be really easy for someone like me, maybe, to get really frustrated with this process, to be able to, to, to see this as, uh, this is failure. Like, oh, I thought we would get that. I thought we got this right. Or I thought after a couple times of changing this, now we're, we're done. We can set it and forget it. And yet there were a couple of people I worked with at Ascension. Some people are just phenomenal. And whenever they come and visit and, and help with, here's a new camera, or here's a new way to film this, or here's a new way to do these kind of things, they never see the, the old way as failure and the new way as complete success. They see it as a process. In fact, they keep using the word iterate meaning uh, they talk, talk about the iterative process. And that's a fun word, and it's a fun phrase. Uh, the iterative process, like, no, this is just an iterative process, they say, which means um, they don't see this, uh, this learning and growing as failure. They see it as learning and growing. So the, the iterative, iter <laughs> so hard for me to say. Mm -hmm. The iterative process is a fa the fact that, oh, we can change. If things aren't working as well as they can be, we can adapt, we can update, we can change these things. And the fact that we need to change or update is not failure, it's the process of growth. Now, I've been thinking about this, not only because that just really just hits my heart, especially after last Sunday when we, <laughs> the mass online mass, just kind of <laughs> took a nosedive, but also when it comes to Lent. I know that for myself, a lot of times when it comes to Lent, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna choose something and we're just gonna hang on to it. Like, it, and it's kind of, it becomes one of those uh, situations where it's like, how long can you hang on? because you chose this thing on Ash Wednesday. You chose that you said you were gonna do this one thing, so for the next season of Lent, you gotta do that one thing, you gotta just hang on. Even if you realize at some point this isn't helping, even if you realize at some point, well, it seems like uh, something else would be more helpful for me. Well, to let go of that and to choose something else or to even adjust that and pivot to something else could seem like failure. Like, no, no, I chose this thing on Ash Wednesday and I stuck with it until Easter. Not a bad thing, but if I realized that, wait a second, the thing I chose is not the thing that's really actually needed in my heart. For example, I, I thought of this example a while ago. Like say you were to uh, give up social media. Say, okay, for, social, for, for Lent, I'm gonna give up social media. I'm not gonna turn to all the, all the usuals, right? Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, those kind of things. Because you just notice yourself getting really distracted by social media. But then what happens is in the course of Lent, you might realize, wait a second, 
it wasn't those things that was really distracting me. It was all the time I spent on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> like right here, all the time I spend on YouTube, that was really distracting me. That was really taking me away from being present. That had become an obstacle between me and the Lord. Well, now you might just say, well, no, I decided on Ash Wednesday, I was going to give up Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. I didn't say anything about YouTube. Well, it could be that you just need to iterate. Give yourself the grace, give yourself the freedom to grow, right? Right? To change and to realize that what I started doing at the beginning of Lent doesn't have to be the thing that I finished all the way through the end of Lent. Now, of course, don't, if something's not broken, you don't have to fix it. But also if you realize that, you know, I had a goal when I gave up whatever the thing was or when I started doing whatever I started doing. And I'm recognizing right now, recognizing right now that this is not helping me towards that goal. I wanted to get closer to the Lord, but I'm realizing, you know, two weeks in that Doing this thing or giving up that thing isn't actually making room for me to get close to the Lord. So instead of just hanging on and saying, well, I'm going to stick with it because I said I was going to do it, gosh darn it, but saying, I'm going to iterate. I'm going to grow. I'm going to change. Why? Because ha, this is so good. Holiness is not an event. Holiness is a process. And Lent doesn't have to just simply be an event. Lent is a process. In fact, we know this already. The season of Lent was originally called the season of purification and enlightenment. And purification doesn't happen in a moment. Purification is a process. And enlightenment doesn't happen in a, mo happen in a moment. Enlightenment is learning, right? And learning is a process. And so, my invitation. If what you chose for Lent is helping you, stick to it. Commitment is a virtue. That's really good. Perseverance is a virtue. But if you discover that what you chose is not actually helping you in the way that is optimal, then why not pivot? Why not change? Why not iterate? <laughs> Lent gets to be an iterative process for all of us. So as we begin this Lent, um, it's not just a set it and forget it. <laughs> Lent is not crockpot cooking and neither is the holiness. Holiness is not crockpot cooking where you just set it and forget it. It is attending to one's soul and asking the question, okay, Lord, is this helping me get close to you? Or is this leading me further away? Is this, is this drawing me near to you? Or is this an obstacle to your heart? And if it is an obstacle, if it is not helping me, then iterate. It is an iterative process. And I love saying that phrase. Anyways, <laughs> from us here at Essential Presents, my name is Father Mike. Happy Lent and God bless. Iterate, iter iterate, iterate.